In this video, we will be covering circle geometry abstract proofs, and specifically, we are going to be proving that a line is a tangent to a circle. Now, to do this, we will be looking at the following example, where we have VE, a tangent to circle TEG, at point E, and AE equals EC. Let's quickly take a look at that. Line BE is a tangent at circle CEG. So this B is at point E over here. And then it says AE is equals to EC. I would like to take a, a moment to point out that when we have information like this, AE equals EC, always check that it's on your diagram. In this case, it's not. So we need to add it on ourselves quickly. AE equals EC. And immediately we can see because of that, A1 would equal angle C. Now, before we get to the questions that will be aimed at this diagram and specifically proving a tangent, um, we need to start with our roadmap. We need to go through the different groupings, um, specifically the center point theorems, the cyclic quad theorems, and the tangent theorems. And if you're unfamiliar with the terminology roadmap, please pause this video, go and check out on the Whiteboard Tutoring SA. There is a video there called the Roadmap to Circle Geometry. It gives a guideline of where to start, and we will be using that now. Additionally, I'd like you to please uh, pause this video regardless and redraw this diagram so that while I'm filling in all the angles that are equal, you can do it with me. Okay, let us start. So the first question you ask yourself is, is there a center point given? The answer is no. So we move on immediately. Next, we are at the second grouping, which we call the cyclic quad grouping, but we are actually looking for concyclic points, meaning points touching the circumference of a circle. Here we see six points, or in each circle, there are four in each. That is fantastic. We can use that. That means we are operating within this grouping. Now, we do not see specific cyclic quads, but we do see theorem 6, which says angles in the same circle segment. So angle B is equal to angle G1. Likewise, angle E2 is equal to A2. Fantastic. Um, for those who are slightly unsure about theorem 6, what we need to look for is a chord that subtends equal angles. In pretty terms, we could say a bow tie. If you look at a butterfly, you see there's a little butterfly there. Okay, fantastic. Let's look in the circle. If we have to follow this chord, GE, we can see we have angle C, and from GE, we also have angle D. Why fantastic. But C is already equals to A1. So let's just indicate one arc over there. And let us do it in white rather so we can keep the color coding equal. So D is not one blue arc, D is one white arc. That's much better. Okay, now let's look. Are there any other butterflies? Why, yes, we have G3, which I'm going to illustrate with three little arches, and E4. Fantastic. Let us move on. So now in purple, we are going to look for the next one. And the question there is, is there a tangent? Well, yes, there is. It said in the beginning, BE is a tangent. And we just want to check this out with a highlighter quick, because there's a lot of information going on. So let's highlight this line that is actually a tangent, just to give ourselves a bit of clarity. Sorry, the highlighter went right over there. Fantastic. So we are working in purple to look for the tangent theorems. Now, remember, theorem 7 requires a center point. We have no centers, so we skip past theorem 7. Theorem 8 has two tangents. We are only working with one, so we skip past theorem 8. And now we look at theorem 9, which is an angle between a tangent and a chord. Here's our tangent. Here is a chord. There is an angle E2 between them. And if we had to put both fingers here, go up with one finger along the chord while the other is still there, and close that angle at point C, we see we have angle C over here would be equals to E2. But C is also equals to D. So to indicate angle C is equals to E2, I'm just going to put a second little arch here so that we have C is equals to D, but C is also equals to E2. Great. So now we've gone through our roadmap for the circle theorems. And in green, I'm now going to indicate if the rest. We need to look for an isosceles triangle, equilateral triangles, or exterior angles of triangles, and then intersecting lines. Um, we will not be marking these on the sketch because if we had to mark every single thing, it becomes too much. But if you look at angle E4, E4 is the exterior angle of triangle ACE. So E4 would equal C plus A1. We're going to keep a mental note of that. Likewise, A1 and 2 would equal G2 plus D. We could go on. If we had to look for intersecting lines, we see that over here. But I want to mention specifically now, when points are not labeled, like this point over here, it will probably not appear in your memo. So therefore, try and work without this intersecting point over here. Likewise, you see H over here? It doesn't have H1, 2, or 3. Meaning, let's try and avoid this and use the things that are labeled. And if we are really desperate, then we could say, you know, H1, H2, and H3. We could label ourselves and work from there. Try and avoid that. So the chances of you getting marks is not 100% for that specific point. 
Now, the questions are going to ask you the following. You will, despite the fact that the diagram was nice and complex, and I told you we are going to be proving the tangent, we don't just jump into proving the tangent immediately. No, we need to go through a few variety of questions that will count different marks. And um, you will see they generally lead each other on. Like question one over here is going to lead us to question two. And question two, once we have the tangent, will lead to question three. Let's quickly take a look at what we're working with. When they say prove that AG equals GD, so they say AG equals GD, when we need to prove sides are equal, they want us to prove this. What you actually need to do is show that angle A1 is equal to angle D. And as soon as you do that, you've proven it. Now, just to give you a quick spoiler as to what we're going to do. If you recall, AE was equal to EC and A1 was equal to C. Can you see C and D are equal? Because angles in same circle segment are butterfly. Therefore, those two are equal. Haha, <laughs> some of you already know where we're going with this. Okay, let's take a sneak peek at number two. They, it wants us to prove that GE is a tangent. And as soon as you see the word prove tangent, um, we need to look at the converse of theorems 7, 8, and 9. And converse, you right is with an E. Okay, so if you had to look at the converse of anything, you need to ask yourself immediately, okay, cool. Is there a center point? No, 7 won't work. Are we working with one or two tangents? Well, only one, so 8 won't work. Do we have a tangent in a chord? Yes. So we're looking at 9. In other words, we need to prove here that E2 is equal to A1. As soon as you do that, GE is a tangent. And let's look at the last question over here. The word bisect. Bisect, let's underline it here. Bisect means cut in half. And if you need to cut angle A and R in half with AH, what you need to do is actually show that A2 and A1 are the same thing. Giving you the preview and the spoilers. If you know how to do it, pause this video and do it yourself. But we are going to take a minute or two to write it out. Now, in order to solve the first question that says we need to find that AG, AG is equal to GD, I told you we needed to prove that angle A is equal to angle D. And as we discussed, because D is equal to C and C is equal to A, then A is equal to D, and therefore the two sides are equal. All right, let's get it, let's write it down. We start off with the first statement. We needed to say that angle A1 is equal to angle C, and our reason would be angles opposite equal sides. Okay, great. Now we can say, well, angle C is equal to angle D, and our reason for that would be angles in same segment. Great. And because C and C are equal, we can now say, well, that means A1 is equal to D, and they did not ask us for angles, they asked us for sides. So we can say, therefore, AG is equals to GD, and our reason would be sides opposite equal angles. Okay, let us move on. As discussed, when proving that a line is a tangent line to a circle, we need to consider the converse of theorem 7, 8, or 9. We already discussed why 9 would be operable here. Before we get started with it, let's just repeat what we have. We were given that AE is equals to EC, then we concluded A1 equals to C, and we proved it. We proved that C is equals to D, and that GD is equal in length to AG. Then, I would just like to take a second to draw the circle that they mentioned we need. A little faster than a second there. Okay, so we are working with the circle that passes through points A, E, and H. And there, in super crazy skills, I drew the circle. Okay, so when proving that that line is a tangent, we need to consider the ten chord theorem. I just want to highlight the tangent they are mentioning here. It's G E. So what we need to look for here is this angle between the tangent and the chord E two. We need to see is E two actually equal to A one. And if you recall from the introduction, we said that E two over here was equal to C because of ten chord theorem. So what that means is E two is equal to C double arch, and C was equals to A. So therefore, E2 is equal to A1, and that is a tangent. Okay, so let's write it down. So we would write here that angle E2 was equals to angle C, and that would be tan chord theorem. Tan chord theorem. And then we could go and repeat the thing and say, well, we know angle A1 is equals to C, 
because well that was proven already and when you see the c and the c fantastic we can say angle e2 is equals to angle a1 we don't need to give a reason for that and because those two are equal we can say therefore g e is a tangent sorry is a tangent and your reason would be um, angle between line and chord not tangent and chord line and chord because we just proved that the line itself was a tangent okay let us move on for the last question where we need to prove a1 equals a2 let's just recap what we have we were given ae equals ec a1 equals c we've proven c equals d we've proven that e2 equals c and therefore a1 is not double arc and what we can remember from the introduction sketch and through our little butterflies or bow ties was that a2 was indeed equals to e2 so if a2 is e2 and e2 is equals to a1 then a1 equals a2 let's write that down okay so we go and we recap in saying well we've proven that angle e2 equals angle a1 we just did it proven okay fantastic now we can go and say well angle e2 is equals to angle a2 and that would be angle in sorry angles apostrophe s in same segment okay great and then we can say well these e2s are the same so angle a1 is equals to angle a2 and that tells us essentially that a therefore a h bisects angle b a e i want to thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe it really helps us create more content i hope you have a lovely day bye, -bye.